It's the Agribusiness Report. I'm Tony St. James, and we're joined today by the Honorable Chuck Grassley from Iowa. Great to see you. Glad to be with you, and I'm in agriculture, too, with my son. We're corn and soybean farmers. And your time on the, the Senate Ag Committee, you've been a, a longtime champion for agriculture uh, here in Washington, D.C., and especially for livestock producers. Yeah. Tell me a little more about okay. what's happening. There. First of all, almost every person that's a farmer in the United States Senate, and that's only about two or three of us, you have to be a big spokesman for agriculture because uh, the other people don't know as much about it as those of us that have dirt under our fingernails. Uh, we have a major problem, particularly for cattle producers and particularly for Midwestern cattle producers. Uh, number one, we don't have enough information through price discovery laws. Uh, the reporting of that, uh, the independent producer, the spot market, the cash person that wants to market on a daily basis as opposed to uh, uh, pr contracting ahead of time, uh, they don't know what a fair price is. The second thing is, and this is the cause of the first, is because four meat packers, the biggest ones, have about 85% of the market, and about 85% of that 85% is pre-contracted, and uh, those contracts are confidential, and so you don't get the prices from them. So the people that's a, a spot market marketer, uh, uh, doesn't know what the price is for that day. And so Fisher and I had two separate bills in to solve the problem. We merged those bills because we, you know, you can't be competing if you're trying to accomplish the same goal. And so our bill would make sure that on a regional basis that a, a certain percentage of the daily kill has to be uh, reserved for people that are going to be uh, negotiating the price for that day as opposed to pre-contracting and uh, they'll have more information for what's a fair price and then a lot of times today you might get a price but maybe you can't deliver your cattle for 30 days so the legislation also requires that each packer has to project ahead 14 days what their daily kill is so that we're going to have a market for the independent producer. That's the, uh, the legislation that you have here in the Senate. F you have some Fisher, Grassley, uh, uh, Wyden, and Tester. Tester is another farmer in the United States Senate. Uh, and we've picked up some other co-sponsorship in the last uh, few days, so I'm glad to do that. And then I think you asked, started to ask me about the House of Representatives. And do we see some pending yeah. legislation on that side yet? Some yeah. support? Yes. Uh, Congressman Feenstra, a Republican from Iowa, Congresswoman Axney, a Democrat from Iowa, have put in the uh, Fisher-Grassley bill. Last one here because we're almost out of time. Uh, I heard you recently say it would be nice if other uh, farm state senators would help you when it came to uh, renewable fuels yeah. as well. Where are we right now with, uh, and I throw out the general renewable fuels as, as the industry, but where would you say we are right now with the industry? Well, we're producing as far as ethanol, and it may apply to biodiesel as well, but I just read a headline in the newspaper that we're at uh, peak production of ethanol, which is quite a turnaround from how we were hurt during the virus. But I think the long-term uh, viability of it can be questioned, and I think the industry itself is questioning, because we don't know where this administration's going with it. A uh, Biden campaign in Iowa for the RFS and for ethanol and biofuels. And uh, we have not heard anything out of the administration. In fact, just the opposite. We have heard all sorts of rumors, maybe going back six weeks, 
that on a certain Friday, it looked like they were going to get RVOs. That's the mandate. Uh, that would be uh, uh, just cutting considerably, which would be very harmful to the industry. It'd be very harmful to the environment because, you know, biodiesel and ethanol are very uh, environmentally positive. And they not only that, but they reduce the price of fuel you put in your car. And they're good for good jobs in rural America that you never thought you'd have if you didn't have the ethanol. But six of us, maybe six or more of our senators, uh, I was one of them, uh, recently wanted to sit down with President Biden. We wrote a letter maybe two, three weeks ago requesting a meeting. We've heard zilch from a president that said that he was going to be for biofuels. So it's very much in, in question, and this uncertainty is not good for the industry. And uh, I'm surprised that they're doing so well now, and I'm glad for that. But uh, looking ahead, uh, if you're going to keep these 43,000 jobs in Iowa, that, uh, that we need to, uh, we just need to have the government bring some certainty to the industry. And we haven't heard anything about RVOs. And the rumors going around that maybe the reason that they're holding it up is because they don't want to upset any Democrats because they got to get all the Democrats on board to pass their foreign two tenths trillion dollar monstrosity that has five or six new social uh, in, uh, programs in it that are entitlement programs. And you know, once you get an entitlement program started, the, uh, the federal government will even be in some ways supporting even multimillionaires through programs that everybody has to participate in. So good to see you. Thanks for the work that you do, uh, not just here, but nationwide for ag. We wish you the best. I love my work.